In a world of so much negativity, where things are constantly pulling you down, the Word of God can build you up. Get inspired with Isabella P. Hello, I'm Isabella, and welcome to another week of Get Inspired. This week is going to be a little bit different. My husband and I just came back from a marriage retreat. It was so amazing, so filled with the Word of God. We had our apostles pour the Word into us, and several different pastors pour the Word into us. It was just an amazing Holy Ghost-filled retreat. And it's just sitting through his classes and listening to hear the statistics in the church about divorce and the statistics about pastors in the church getting divorced is kind of saddening and it's kind of putting a burden on my heart so i'm just here today to just share a little bit of the information that we learned at the conference and just to talk to you concerning your marriage i don't necessarily need a topic but if you want we could talk about simplifying your marriage with the love of God. So many times, you know, it is like people are in a marriage and, you know, things may not be happening the way you expect it to happen. Things may not be going the way you expect it to go. In. But everything in life has challenges. And because everything in life has challenges, when it comes to your marriage, because you get a challenge or you face with a challenge, doesn't give you the license to walk away. The Bible says, in Matthew 19 and 6, so they are no longer two but one. God has joined them together so no one should separate them. The Bible means exactly what it says. No one should separate them. So you should not allow anything or anyone to get between you and your spouse to cause a division between the both of you. Nothing should do that nothing or anyone not your family members not your parents not your best friend not your children absolutely nothing not even your church you should allow get between your between you and your spouse causing strife in your marriage it was so important that the bible repeated it again in mark 10 and 9 it says god has joined them together so no one should separate them that's how important marriage is to god Marriage is the fundamentals of your family. This is what your family is built upon. You know, men in our society, they are willing to be the head of the household, but they're not willing to do what it takes to be the head of a household. I'm not saying it's all men, but there are some men, even spiritual men, even men in the church. And like I said earlier, the statistics that show the divorces in the church and the divorces of the pastor, even pastors. They, it's okay for them to be the head in the church and be the pastor in the church, but when they come to their home, it's a different story. If you are willing to say that I am the head of the household, you should be willing to do what it takes to be the head of the household. At church, you, there's a pastor. We have a pastor. We have apostles at our church. Well, God compare your marriage to the church and your love for each other like the church. So at home, husbands, you are the pastors of your home. You have to come up with a vision for us. We need you to step up, go before God, and lay the vision out that God has given to you. And as our wives, as your wives, you know, we um, co-labor with you and we help you to bring that vision to pass. But I will tell you something, husbands. If you sit around and don't be that man of your household that God has called you to be, and you don't come up with the vision for your wife to be able to embrace and follow, she might just come up with her own vision. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but that might just happen in your household. And that's a way that strife is gonna build up in your household, that confusion is gonna build up in your household, because husbands, you did not stand up and be that man that God have called you to do. Praying over your family, praying the protection of your family, providing for your family. It doesn't matter, it's not who, God did not say the head of the household is the person that has the biggest paycheck, no, he called our husbands to be the head of the household. And wives, you know, we are supposed to submit to our husband as he submits to God. We're supposed to submit to each other. But for some reason, society has turned submission into, be, into this negative stuff. And submission is not negative at all. We were not called to be subservient to our husband, not servants to him. And, you know, 
he's not supposed to treat us like a servant, but we're supposed to be submitted unto our husband, just as he submits himself unto God and in return submit himself unto us. You know, women, we have to also allow our husband to be the head of our household. You know, so many of us strong women, you know, we tend to like sometimes want to do things and want to, if our husband is not taking, you know, doing the stuff that we need him to do, we want to step up and be the head of our household. No. no, we need to pray for our husband. We need to intercede on his behalf. We need to go before God and lift him up before God. You know, submission is not a bad thing. Submission is actually a gift from God. Your ability as a wife to be submissive unto your husband, that's a gift from God. And it happens because of the love of God. You don't only submit to your husband when he's doing things right or when things are going good in your household. And when things are not going good, you tend to like back up and be like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not submissive because I'm not going to be submissive because he's not doing the right thing. No, submission is something that happens because you're supposed to love your husband with an unconditional love, with the love of God. So even when things are not going right, you have the ability to submit because you're looking like you're submitting unto God. You're submitting unto your marriage and you are committed to your marriage to bring to pass that life that God has created for you and your husband. And you have to re remember also in the Bible that when you get married, it's like three becoming one. You know, God is in the midst of you and your husband. So if we... You know, so many times we, we thank God for saving us and we, we tend to forget how bad we were before God saved us. But as Christians, it hurts my heart to see that we don't even believe God to save our marriage. We don't even believe God that when we're having a problem in our marriage that God could fix it. There is nothing in your marriage that God cannot fix. But you have to go before him. You know, he's not the God that's going to force something onto you. He's a free will God, so you have to go before him and you have to pray concerning your marriage. You cannot just leave every day and let your spouse walk out the door without praying over them and without blessing them. You have to pray for each other. You know, you have to have that perfect love for each other because that perfect love is going to cast out all fear. You know, you have to know that God loves you and your husband loves you and your wife loves you no matter what. No matter how many mistakes you make or what happened, what went wrong, that you are able to love each other with the perfect love of God. But you, some women might be saying, so how can I be submissive to him and he's not even doing the right thing? Some of them don't even go to church. My husband don't go to church. It doesn't matter. When God told you to be submissive, he did not say submit to your husband when he goes to church. He did not say submit to your husband when he's being good. He doesn't. Submission is you submit because you're looking at it like you see your husband as God sees him. You see your marriage as God sees it. And when you see your marriage like that, you are able to work towards your marriage even if your husband is not giving up hundred percent you as a wife or the other spouse should be willing to give a hundred percent to your marriage to make it work I usually hear people say oh I'm giving 50 percent and my spouse is giving 50 percent well if the both of you all just give 50 percent when somebody is feeling like a 30 percent one day your marriage is not at a hundred percent and that's where strife step in but if the both of you all decide that you're going to give a 100 percent each one of you is going to give a 100% in your marriage, then you're never going to fall below 100%. Because even when one spouse is feeling like 80% and one spouse is feeling like 100%, you're still at 180%. So you both should be willing to like, you know, have that love for each other and that, that perfect love that God have, that even when they make mistakes, you could lift them up and let them know that it's okay and you could move away from that mistake instead of dwelling on that mistake and make that mistake ruin your life. Just in closing, just remember, submission is about dying to self and trusting God. God is bigger than you. He's bigger than your husband and he's bigger than your marriage. Trust God that as you die to self, that God will take care of you and God will take care of your marriage. Even when your spouse is not acting right, just remember, as you die to self, you are able to live to Christ. So get inspired to trust God to take care of your marriage. Get inspired to make God the Lord of your marriage. And get inspired to understand that submission is not a bad thing. It's just dying to self. See you next week.